Well, today as we continue our study through 1 Corinthians, we're going to be looking at the spiritual gifts and the body of Christ. And we're literally going to be looking at those people who say that they don't need to go to church to be a Christian are actually people who are cutting off their nose to spite their faith. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we are going through the Word of God in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you to invite to go with us on this journey. Subscribe to our channel, click the bell for notifications so that you can receive a devotional much like this one where we read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, today as we continue going into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to be looking at this idea of spiritual gifts and the idea of the body. And a big reason for this is because as we've studied up until this point in 1 Corinthians, we see there are a lot of divisions within the body of Christ here in the Corinthian church. And Paul is wanting to address the idea that that they're all part of one body. They really all should be together and not fighting against one another. So let's take a look at this together. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. So what we see in this passage of Scripture 
is Paul laying out the importance of the body of Christ, that spiritual gifts are given. And not everybody is necessarily given the same spiritual gift. And so when we have a a passage like 1 Corinthians 12 that speaks very explicitly about the gifts of the Spirit. And there's nothing in the Scripture that says the gifts have ceased. I know that there are many cessationists who would say, you know, that after the apostolic age, the gifts of the Spirit were uh, it stopped its manifestation. But the truth of the matter is, there's nothing in the Scripture that tells us that this happens. We see the exact opposite. But in this idea of division, the body of Christ that Paul is mentioning is a local body as well as the the greater body of Jesus. And he says, look, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good, not for yourself, but for everybody else within the body of Christ, that the body might be built up together. That's the whole idea, that we're using our gifts in unison to proclaim the glory of Jesus Christ. Those people who would say, you know what, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. As I said in the beginning, they literally, using the uh, analogy that Paul uses in this passage, cut off their nose despite their faith. And what I mean by that is, They may have a gift of the Spirit, but they're no longer exercising it within the body to benefit anybody else. They're keeping it for themselves. They're they're cut off. And the way I describe it when we go to our um, newcomers class is this, is that the body of Christ is better when we're working together as one body. Maybe you're a hand, maybe you're an elbow, maybe you're an earlobe, I don't know. You know, whatever part of the body that, that God has you to be. But the difference between... Uh, the body as a whole working together as imperfect as we are. And as we've seen with Corinthians, they are a very imperfect people. God still uses the local body so long as they're faithful in their doctrine to, to who Christ is to mature people in the Lord. Whereas a person out on their own trying to just say, I'm just going to grow on my own, does so at the expense of the body. And at the expense of them being part of the body. Uh, For example, and the way I I put it to them is like, you know, if, if my hand were to be cut off, my body, I could still live without a hand. As a matter of fact, one of our pastors doesn't have a leg, you know, here at the, at the church. And so he can live without his leg, but the leg itself cannot live by its own, on its own. As a matter of fact, it withers and dies. And that's what happens to people who say, guess what? I don't need the church in order to believe in Jesus. True. I mean, in the, in the very foundational sense, that's true. But what's not true is that you're not going to grow. You're going to eventually wither and die off. And more people, you show me somebody who's divorced from the body of believers to encourage them in the faith, no matter how big or small that body is. I'll show you somebody who's not growing in their faith. Almost every single time I can show that to you. You know why? Because the person who is doing that is doing that in disobedience to passages like this one that commands us to be together and commands us to use our gifts for the common good of the body of Christ. See, we need one another. Let's not pretend that we don't. You know, one of the things that happens to me all the time as a pastor is we get people who come off the street asking for help because the church's reputation is that of helping others. And we're called to help others within the body of Christ first. And so oftentimes, if it's their first time here, I might help them with a a little something. And my encouragement to every single one of them is that they need to become part of the body of Christ so that they're not by themselves trying to handle these things on their own so that people can use their gifts and and. Uh, extend mercy to those whom they do know within the body of Christ who are Christ. Oftentimes they just leave because they got what they wanted and maybe a year or two later they show up back at the door again and they're asking for money again because their situation hasn't changed. But because they never became part of the body, I'm not inclined to help them because I don't know them. And it doesn't seem like they want to know us as the body of Christ. So how do I know that they're in Jesus? They're only here because of our reputation, not because they know us. And so this is part of that being, you know, gentle as doves and wise as serpents that I believe that God has called us to do. Guys, we need to be in the body of Christ and known by the body of Christ so that the body of Christ can use its gifts. We use the gifts God has given us to build each other up in him. 
Let's do that so that our faith, by exercising those gifts for the common good of the body, can also be built up in Jesus Christ. I hope that encourages you to do that. Maybe be a little bit more committed to your local body. God bless you, and we will talk with you again tomorrow.